Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Series 2, Episode 4 of the FA Primary PE webinars. Today, we are looking at the current PE landscape. So with that in mind, we are going to kick things off with the following question just as people start to enter the webinar. So if you could just drop into the chat box your thoughts around this question. So what does the current PE landscape look like in your school? So you can think about that in a, a, from a general perspective, uh, what it maybe looks like now over the last couple of weeks since, since students have been back in, or what you, you think it might be looking and evolving to look like in September. So uh, the question's there at the top of the chat box if you want to just drop uh, your answers in. And while you're having a little think about that, I'm going to introduce today's panel of PE coordinators. So welcome to Chris Welburn, joining us from sunny Yorkshire. How are you today, Chris? Fantastic. Pleasure to see you all for the last in the series uh, as we take a pause in July. So pleasure to be here. Fantastic. And back by popular demand after his uh, webinar debut last week, very successful debut, we've got Will Morford joining us. Good afternoon, Will. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me back. I'm glad my, my debut went okay. You're welcome. Well, you are welcome. Looking forward to it. Just before we do start, just a couple of little, little bits of housekeeping. So as usual, uh, the webinar is going to be recorded uh, and then put up on the FA Learning YouTube uh, channel for, for people to view afterwards. And the presentation, handouts and certificate of attendance will be available to download at the end of the workshop. Uh, again, in, in these uncertain times at the moment, uh, just a little bit of a disclaimer, ju just to make sure that, you know, as, as you are delivering PE, please make sure you are following the government, national, local education authority and, and any school specific guidance. And we will post the, the, the COVID-19 guidance from AFPI at the end of the webinar, the link to that for you, for you to have a little look at that. Now, over the next 45 minutes to an hour, these are our intended outcomes of the workshop. So we're going to be looking at this current PE landscape and in particular focusing in on engaging parents in the, in the PE provision and its purpose, using PE as a tool to rejuvenate and, and reconnect with school and, and school's core values in your own context, and the role blended learning can play in a positive future for PE going forward, particularly over the last few weeks as, as online learning started to, to be prevalent in, in a lot of the PE that we'd, we've been delivering. Now, just looking at, at the chat box, uh, I can see lo lots of things coming in and it, it's clear that the landscape, you know, might vary and then and just reading some of the things that are, are popping up on the screen that the landscape looks, looks different from school to school, you know, different circumstances and, you know, certain schools and staff values may be different with regards to PE and you know especially with, with with so many people we've got on the call today it might look different in different contexts but what we do hope is that over the next 45 minutes we can provide you provide you with some takeaways to go back and have a positive impact on the PE landscape in your own schools and in your own environment and um, I'm pleased to say you know to help us to do that and consider this issue we uh, were very fortunate earlier in the week to be joined by Rick Baldock, the, the professional learning officer for the Australian Council for Health, PE uh, and Recreation, to record some conversations around the topic and the current PE landscape. And I'm going to play you a short clip in which Rick just introduces himself and gives you a little bit of detail about his background. First and foremost, welcome, Rick, to our FA uh, P unit series. Uh, this is series two for us, episode four on being fit for the future. Um, huge thank you for, for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and your background? Ah, thanks for having me, Chris. Look, I'm an old guy, so I've done a bit. You know, I've been a, a, a teacher, both primary school classroom teacher, phys ed teacher. Um, and then I've gone into our education department in South Australia, worked in there worked on various uh, physical education projects for ACHPA in South Australia and uh, and did a stint in uh, Qatar in the Middle East, uh, writing curriculum over there, and uh, then come back and, and worked in more project work uh, with primary schools and secondary schools in South Australia.
So I'm sure you will, will agree we are very fortunate, uh, very privileged to be able to get uh, an insight today into to Rick's experience and, ex and expertise in the field of, of physical education. And before I, I play you the, the, the first conversation, I think one thing we can probably all agree on is that the PE landscape has changed significantly over the last 10, 15, 20 years. And as a result, PE in the modern day may look very different to when the parents of our pupils experienced PE for themselves, particularly at primary school, and certainly may look different to how we experience PE as well. So with that in mind, I, I, I've just put a couple of questions up there that I'd like you to consider uh, as I play out the first conversation that we recorded. And we know as teachers that engaging parents can have a massive impact on your experience and, and the experience of the child. So I'm going to stick the questions at the top of the, at the chat box so you can keep referring back to them. Uh, if you want to take notes and, and drop any, any answers, any thoughts into the chat box like you have been doing, that would be fantastic. And it'd be brilliant if, if anybody's got any good practice and any ideas to share around engaging parents, particularly in the delivery of PE. So I'll just load up the first, the, the first part of our conversation. So Rick, obviously the, the last few months have looked uh, very different for, for different countries all over the world in terms of uh, school provision, PE provision, and certainly in the UK, that's maybe looked different from school to school as well. Uh, I was wondering if you could just start us off by giving us an insight into what PE provision has looked like in Australia from the start of lockdown to, to where we are currently, and I suppose what role different parties have played in that in terms of parents and, and teachers in, in providing that PE provision? Yeah, okay. So it was a little bit different here. We all got terribly worried about it um, and uh, basically our states in Australia responded differently depending upon the situation. So we have a national cabinet meeting of all the state premiers plus the prime minister and we tried to get some coordinated approach, but there was differences between states and the speed that they're coming out of lockdown has been very different depending upon the amount of community uh, infections uh, that are occurring with the virus. We're really fortunate in the state that I'm in from South Australia that we have uh, a very low rate of infection. We've gone, I think it's three or four weeks now, without a community-based infection. The only infections that we've had are, are sort of uh, people that have flown back into Australia and come back to Adelaide. And um, while they're in quarantine, uh, they've, uh, they've then developed the symptoms of COVID-19. So we're, we're in a very fortunate situation, whereas uh, right next door to us in the state of Victoria in Melbourne, um, their, their school has only gone back in the last, they've only gone back to school in the last week and a half, two weeks. So they, they went into lockdown. Uh, we, ne we never got fully into lockdown in, in South Australia. So we're really fortunate, but uh, in terms of it being imposed. But what happened was that towards the end of term one, during early April, um, the, the word came that the, the virus was hitting, people were con concerned. And so people uh, at the direction of the Premier of the state uh, kept their children at home where they could, except for frontline workers, you know, the emergency workers, people like that. Uh, their kids went to school. So there was roughly around five to 10% of kids attending school. Mm. And in the last week of school in South Australia, uh, teachers were given that last week without classes so they could prepare online resources, which they did and continue to do through the next two weeks of school holidays at the end of term one. And then we came back and I could be a little bit naughty and so I think parents have had enough of some of their kids at home. And um, about... It varied from school to school, but 40 to 50 percent of, of kids on average returned to school day one of term two. And, you know, they'd been home for three weeks. Parents have been working from home, a lot of them. 
And I think they'd said, that's enough. We'll send our kids back. And by the end of two more weeks, every kid was back at school. It, we, we were back to sort of normal levels of school. Whereas, like I said, in other states, it's been a lot slower return. So, you, you know, you may have similar things happening in Great Britain. Uh, maybe Northern Ireland is different to Scotland, is different to England and different to Wales. So, you know, you, you get those regional differences. And so governments respond and parents and families respond differently. So, you know, we're lucky we haven't gone down to full lockdown, not like uh, Singapore, where my daughter lives, um, and and certainly not like China. Um, so, Rick, what did that what did that P provision look like for for when you only had that five or ten percent of students in the school? What did P provision look like for the ninety percent who were at home for that for that short period? Yeah. So so what happened was that uh, we started to design uh, lessons for home. And in terms of PE, I might just share with you the, the sort of things that that uh, we we did in, in South Australia. So uh, what we did was in week one of term two, uh, we're in term two now, we're, we're coming towards the end of it. Uh, we actually designed some home-based programs that kids could do with the assistance of their parents. And you'll see that in, in this document that I'm sharing here on the screen, that green, the green part is what the kids need to know, and the red part is what parents may need to do to support and enhance the learning of their kids. Um, and that came about in the games-based approaches that I'm illustrating here, you know, providing the variations for how the games could be modified, or the constraints change, the questions you might ask, uh, and the key points, teaching points, to remind kids about those skill developments. We then went through what the um, what the learning intentions were. We designed these lessons so that uh, kids did the same warm up each week in their lesson. And the warm up we chose was a dance, the Madison, uh, and they did it to Nutbush City Limits. We provided some YouTube clips for them to look at. We also gave them all the steps. And the idea was that when they returned to school, we would all do it together. So it was sort of a, a bit of a celebration and, and a bit of fun to come back to, to and everybody had learnt this dance. So you can see the, the various aspects of the dance there. That was the warm up. Then we went into the games and this game is taken from a, a, a writer in South Australia, Shane Poole, uh, who's at Flinders University. And um, w we decided also to focus with the year five sixes on target games because we felt that they were easier to play in the backyard uh, and uh, and that they they didn't need a lot of people to play against. So a lot of kids are in small families. Uh, there aren't a lot of siblings, uh, so they can play these games. There you'll see there how to change the game, the questions you could ask, and what you might need to remind the kids about. I think I think Rick, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Rick. I think you know it, it's great just to hear some of the things that we've been advocating as, as a PE unit for a long time, and certainly in, the, in this webinar series around not just the physical aspects of no. of PE. And uh, I think it's great to see that even you know when you when you're working with parents and and parents are delivering some aspects of PE at home that you know you're talking about that differentiation, um, you know, adapting and modifying games, you know games game learning through games is something that you know we talk about constantly and the advantages to that and you know the questioning techniques and and posing those questions to students and, and it's not just a physical activity and something we, we're advocating so it's you know it's really nice for us to see that that's happening in other parts of the world as well yeah well you know that game-based approach you know it has different names in different parts of the world here we call it game sense uh, but in england and europe you must probably refer to it as tgfu you know, it's it's all fairly similar. There are slight differences, but yeah. And and I reckon this is one of the things that the little feedback that I've had is the teachers really liked it, but I know some parents went, whoa, what's this? Mm -hmm. So this was a bit of an introduction and we'll talk about it later most probably, but this was a bit of an introduction to parents about what was going on in PE at school and how much it's most probably changed from when they went to school as kids, right? And then we finished off with a reflection. If I now just close that one 
And instead, I'll go to what the last lesson in the series was like, so in week five, and you'll see that in that lesson, starts off looking very similar, but you'll notice down here, this is what the teacher or parents. So halfway through, about week three, we decided, wait on, more of the kids are back now. So we'll add the teacher in, so it was parent and teacher. By week five, all the kids were back, well and truly back. So now it became the teacher or parents because it was still optional for some parents if they wanted to keep their kids at home, if they were concerned or they had special cases. Right. Can, I, can I just ask you there, Rick, um, mm, sure. particularly in those first couple of weeks when, you know, you were relying quite heavily on the parents and you said that, you know, some of them, it came a bit of a shock to them that PE maybe looked different to, to how it did yeah. when they were at school. Um, how did you, because I think this is something, you know, a bigger picture that, that primary school teachers, a uh, challenge that potentially some of them face in terms of how did you work with the parents? How did you engage the parents in in getting them involved in this in this PE provision? Yeah, I, I think it was done informally um, and it sort of raises the question about how you deliver this stuff. Is it just delivered like this so that the kids can do it at a time that suits them in the week? Or is it face-to-face -face learning across the, the online platform? And what most of the schools did was they chose to let the kids choose and the parents choose when they wanted to teach it but that they were there if they had problems and, and they wanted to talk about it. So, you know, there, there were those sort of two modes of online learning. You could either do it in your own time and there were enough instructions there to follow, uh, or you could do it face-to-face uh, -face with the kids uh, across an online platform, set them going, or sometimes teachers said, I'm available during these, these times you can ask questions about the phys ed lesson or any other lessons in the primary school that you wanted to talk about. Right? Do, you, so, do you think that, do you think then, Rick, that, you know, we've mentioned a couple of times about PE evolving over time and, and certainly since parents were at school themselves, do you think their perception of PE has been changed over the last few weeks in terms of it's not just about the physical activity, but it's actually about much more than that? Do you think yeah. attitudes have possibly changed? Yeah, I think so. It's hard to tell at the moment. I think parents or, you know, families are coping with a lot of different things and, you know, their lives changed significantly when, when we sort of went to this sort of self-imposed lockdown. Um, and so it's really hard to tell at the moment, even still today, whether it had much impact. But I think we might see that over time, you know, and I, and I keep, you know, I think the point you make there is, is really important. It's more than just movement skills, but it's also, you know, the tactics and strategies. And the third thing that I always add is every lesson has to have something around personal and social development. And so we really started to add that in. And I think that was a bit of a shock to some teachers. One phys ed teacher who I work with in a secondary school saw another unit of work that I'll show you in a minute on games making. And she had she had phone calls from other parents uh, with kids of a similar age saying, how do you do this? What's this about? And uh, and she said to me, did you write that unit of work? And I said, yeah. She said, oh, wow. Did that get some parents thinking? You know, they were they were trying to do the best they could for their kids. But it was it was really quite foreign to them because it was beyond their experience. Yeah. Um, and then facetiously, you know, I think everybody's seen those sort of things that have come around from time to time across uh, the internet, across various social media. You know, I think I think parents most probably have a different impression of what their kids like and have learnt a lot about how they now learn, you know, and, and how learning is different. The other big thing I think that's come out of it is that stuff around the self-directed learner has tended to do better uh, in, in this environment than say, you know, the one that waits for direction, the one that the teacher has to be there and work with um, and relies on other kids to do it. So to me, that's that's another thing that that came out of this. I'll just show you to the the last one I want to show you is, is an example. It's, this was for older kids. And what we did here was um, this was a games making unit. And we felt that this was a really good time 
for, for students to have a go at game making, predominantly in their backyard. So we set this from year five to year 10. We've got the different curriculum outcomes. Ignore that because that's all Australian curriculum stuff. Um, and, and then they were able to choose from the four usual game categories, but you notice that we've added two new ones in there. We've added aesthetics and also racing and competing. And that's sort of coming out of our heads at the moment. We think there are these two other game categories that may be of interest in, in phys ed. And we're just starting to play with that and look at that. So there are a whole range of things that we asked them to do here. And then we, and then we broke it into lessons um, and explained the game categories. We've added in an awareness talk. So that's around personal and social responsibility. And, and this awareness talk was around respect. Um, and then, how do you inquire into games and what they're about? And then some worksheets that actually got students to respond to think about that. And they had to pair up uh, with a partner, somebody else in the class, and design a game for one of their backyards that they could play in their backyard. So that that was an, that was just another sort of thing uh, that we did. And we got a really good response to that. Because I think, uh, sorry, but again, it just it just right. highlights, doesn't it, that think about all those all those social skills, those psychological skills that are coming into that process in terms of the creativity to design the decision making, the social skills with other people to to work out if the game works, that the leadership that's coming out, and again, you know, it, it, it's brilliant for us to hear that this is happening because it's, it's what we advocate in terms of all these benefits to to PE and hopefully this this time over the last few weeks has has maybe opened a few eyes to, to parents and and within schools as to the power p has to 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 affect the the child longer term in terms of their in terms of their life as well mm. it, yeah i i think it has look and the other the other thing that's come out is that initially teachers had a mad rush for resources and i think that's happened everywhere and they've just gone to the internet, plundered the internet and taken anything uh, because, you know, they've hit the panic button. And so there's this mad scramble for resources. That's certainly what happened in South Australia. And I know talking to colleagues in China, the same, the same thing occurred there. And what we found was that teachers weren't terribly discerning about what they chose. They just went for yeah. give me some activities, yeah. right? And... If we had stayed in lockdown for longer, I think that would have come back to bite us yeah. uh, in some ways, because what we forgot about was, I, I suppose, there are those three parts of any, any good teaching program. There's the content, there's the pedagogy, and then there's the assessment. And teachers forgot about the assessment and the reporting that they had to do. And some of our colleagues in China actually shared with us very early on when we talked to them about it, they said, whatever you do, don't forget that because we're now trying to frame our report writing and we don't have much evidence, mm -hmm. right? So that, that was another one. So that's why we started to add in both formative and summative assessment into those uh, lesson plans. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Rick. I think that's given us a, a great insight and given, given the teachers and the coaches who, who are tuning into this webinar a real good insight into not only what's been taking place in Australia, but also the power it's, it's had to affect longer term in terms of the student and the school going forward in terms of PE provision. So thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for everybody who's contributed uh, into the chat box. I'm, I'm going to come to some of those ideas uh, in a second because there's been some fantastic stuff dropped in there, which is brilliant. I think a couple of things from, from my point of view uh, around what we've just heard from Rick is that, firstly, I think we do need to consider as teachers that PE probably does look very different, doesn't it, to when the parents were at school, as I, as I mentioned before the clip. And, you know, if we the parents might consider PE to still look like running laps around the field or 15 aside rounders and kids waiting five minutes for the go or waiting in a queue to dribble a ball around, uh, uh, you know, a set of cones or lots of star jumps and press ups. And understandably, they might not 
realised that he's hopefully evolved over time and he's certainly more about the holistic development of, of, the, of the child and into, into, a, into a good person. And, you know, some of those ideas that have come in around, around those questions that are posed around how we can collaborate with parents, how we can engage them around this, you know, ju just picking some out. Um, Sammy Webster talked about family challenges and um, Sissy Capaldi about uh, organizing a PE session with the parents present. F fantastic. Uh, Sabre virtual lessons involving the parents. Uh, brilliant stuff. Um, Nathan talked about parent involvement, Sammy Webster, um, involving parents in, in terms of the curriculum and, and what's on it. Um, Michelle receiving videos of families doing activities together. And all those things, for me, are all about sharing that, that PE vision of your school and sharing why you were doing it. And I think that that's key for me. And if, we, if the parents understand why you're doing what you do in PE, then I think you're more likely to get that buy-in, which which is which is fantastic, and and hopefully makes the experience better for you and the students, and, and makes things a lot easier. And you know, getting getting the parents involved um, is is a fantastic is a fantastic method. Getting getting the pupils to to engage the parents as well, and encouraging them to talk about you know what they've done in PE and why they've done it. And one of the best pieces of work I ever set was. Uh, to a to a class and ask them over the summer holidays to to teach the parents again that we've done in PE, and explain what why we've done it and you know some of the things that came back were absolutely fantastic and, and it highlighted some of those leadership skills those communication skills and and got the parents engaged in, in what they were doing in terms of PE, and you know Emma and uh, Lamara you know have made a great point which hopefully one advantage out of the situation that we've been over the last few weeks might be that parents might understand a little bit more around um you know what what schooling's about and uh, you know their experience of homeschooling might help them to understand a little bit more around the around the PE vision and you know uh, as Ramon, Ramon has mentioned that it might be easier with some parents than the other you know some might buy into it a little bit more but hopefully it you know it allows us to engage them and you know, just give the kids the best experience possible and, and hopefully get the parents involved, um, particularly as we maybe go towards some, more, some blended learning in PE and just give the family the best experience possible of PE and, and understanding that why they're doing it. Now, we're going to move on to the next conversation. I'm going to, I'm going to bring Will in and Will's going to consider a few other factors uh, based around the questions that are on your screen now. Well, thanks, Ryan, and um, thanks again for some, some insights and uh, summarising that so well. Um, so yeah, in this next discussion, um, we spoke to Rick about how we could start to use PE um, for the return of school in September. So this next 10 minutes really is just another opportunity to share some thoughts in the, in the chat box around these two questions. So once we get into the clip, just start to consider how can, we, how can PE be used to reconnect and rejuvenate the children um, after this time of lockdown, but also perhaps moving forward, how could um, you use or we use PE to celebrate that return to school in September? So again, use that chat box, share some, share some, more, some more of your fantastic ideas um, as the video is playing. So Rick, now that children are returning to school, could you just give us a bit of an insight into what part PE has played in the celebration, re rejuvenation, reconnection of children since the um, mm -hmm. return of schools? Yeah, it's really interesting. There are things that are happening on, a, on multiple levels at once. First of all, the kids were just thrilled to be back at school. That returning, returning to normality and as one teacher said to me today in a high school in Adelaide, um, we've had to really watch out for these kids because some of them aren't getting the level of normal support that they would get at home. They all come from good families in the school, but he said some of them have needed more support than they ever had before. And he said that's been good for us because we've now got stronger and closer relationships uh, with a lot of those kids because they weren't getting that same level of support at home that they normally get, so they got it at school. 
So I thought that was a really interesting comment. Um, the other thing is, you know, they were happy to be back, but I think we didn't take advantage of some sort of celebration for returning to school. Now, our kids weren't in lockdown as long as your kids will be. But, you know, I, I think it's a great opportunity to celebrate the return to school and the importance of school and kids' lives. Um, and, and, of course, PE is a big part of that, especially for some kids. You know, if kids were like me growing up, I only went to school for the phys ed. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, I had to deal with all that other stuff like, you know, maths and English and stuff. That was just the pain. But, you know, it was the phys ed and then the sport after school that I really went for and to be with your mates, all right? Um, and so I think if, if schools can set up some sort of celebration, that would be great. Our teachers were just dealing with a changing situation and it just kept on changing under their feet. It was like shifting sands. Um, and it's really interesting to watch the restrictions come off because they, they come off in a phased way. So, you know, we're now starting to open our borders to other states, but we've been told quite clearly the last things that will open are international travel and large crowd attendances at sport. So, for instance, we had the first crowd in South Australia at an AFL football match um, in Adelaide, and we, in a 50,000 seat stadium, we had 2,000 people all spread around the stadium, right? So that that was that was huge because that was our first crowd back uh, in AFL. That only occurred last weekend. But now we're starting to see further restrictions come off. So it's, you know, we went into lockdown quickly and then there's phases of return. But like another teacher said to me in another school the other week, you know, like it was hard for me to remember uh, that we were in lockdown because I, I kept coming to school and I kept bumping into the kids. And he said the kids' behaviour didn't change much at all and they were happy to be back and he said so once the kids came back it was like the outside world just didn't matter things sort of became and went back to normal in the school setting and he said it was only when i drove home that i went oh yeah there are less cars on the road what's going on here oh that's right COVID 19. so so in some ways celebrate but it's that celebration of returning to the more normal part of life and that that's been really important for our kids. And has there been any kind of ideas around what sort of celebration would look like on that reconnection? Yeah, well, like the um, the sort of stuff that I talked about before, sharing a warm up, playing the games that you maybe played uh, when you were at home, sharing the, the learning with other kids. Um, and and I think, you know, just just you know, just going back to normal. That That's the big thing for a lot of kids. And and especially when you realise maybe if mum and dad have lost their job at home, you know, that's a stressful situation. So coming to school was a return to normalcy, you know, and, and, and how important that is for kids and giving them that security that that's something they can hold on to. That's a place where they can get that support. I think that's the big thing that's coming out. Yeah, and again, we're just reinforcing that point around that social element, isn't it? That PE really does provide that social connection. And in our PE lessons, how can we really start to, to see that and develop that? Yeah, and and in Australia, we, we have health and physical education both together. So, you know, I keep saying to teachers in Australia, we, we're we responsible for actually teaching those skills, the personal and social development school, skills. Every other learning area or subject uses them, but we're responsible for teaching them and developing them. So that's something else that's unique besides the physical that we're responsible for. And I keep saying what we want out of our phys ed lessons is not just better players, but better people. Yeah, and that's certainly something that, we, that echoes with the stuff that we're doing with the FA. And you know, we always say about developing the, the person first before the player. Yeah, so that, yeah. 
So that's great. Th thanks for those uh, insights, and hopefully that's given the uh, the listeners a, a couple of ideas about how they can start to reconnect and rejuvenate when those kids are coming back into school. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Yeah, so um, just looking at the chat box, and we'll pick up on some of these ideas, but there's some really excellent ideas going on, and some thoughts around how we can start to use PE to celebrate and reconnect and rejuvenate. Um, for me, just uh, picking up on kind of three key key items that came out of uh, that discussion, really, is the first one when Rick mentioned that um, there's a lot of children were thrilled to be back, and that actually school was their, their supportive place or a safer place for them. Um, I think we really have to start to uh, remember and be aware that COVID has been a real stressful period for, for us as adults, but that may have yeah, been put onto the children as well. So they might be living um, at home with parents that have lost their jobs, um, the parents might be having to work a lot. Uh, it might be that they're part of a large family with lots of siblings and actually um, they've not gained the attention or the interaction that they need. It might be that they're an only child and actually they haven't got a play buddy. Um, it might be that they've been um, on a top, living in a top floor flat without uh, any access to outdoor facilities or um, play areas. So I think we've really got to see how PE can start to get them back again and get them moving and get them socialising. Um, and that is that vital role in that re-establishing and reconnection. So the simple ideas, and again, a few of you picked up on these, and Annalise has spoke about um, the kids uh, expressing their, their experience of lockdown through a dance routine, but Rick mentioned about um, the kids coming back and just sharing their routine and showing it to each other. It might be um, where they challenge each other to play a back garden game that they've developed. But again, just giving them that opportunity to start to reconnect and take leadership roles and, and just chat again um, and that being um, back to more normal. And then in terms of the use of PE to celebrate, uh, I'm not sure we've got the answer to this, but it's just more of a, a rhetorical question. So is this something that you're considering? Again, I saw um, Michelle perhaps suggested a, a sports fun day uh, or some type of festival for that um, celebration of their, of their, of their back. Um, Rick felt that they had missed the opportunity. So I think now we can start to do that planning ready for September or whenever the schools return. We're going to be in a, in a much better place. Um, and then finally, and this is perhaps coming away from the, these two questions that, that Rick mentioned was uh, he suggested that we are responsible for teaching the personal and social development skills and that's been a real key theme probably in our webinars today. Um, a mantra that I use is that these behaviours or these skills are taught not caught um, and again perhaps thinking back to um, the webinar last week around effective planning how many of us are, are planning to teach those softer skills and those everyday skills so we develop the person first before we develop the player? Um, so again, for me, I think that's a real important point to, to consider moving forward. But finally, just to reinforce that PE is uniquely positioned to really start to help um, these children um, be active, develop that holistic, um, those holistic skills that are going to help them in, in um, life. And, we need to keep um, promoting the, the benefits of PE. So with that in mind, I'm going to pass on to my colleague, Chris, who is going to take you through the next section. Thanks, Will. Um, fantastic insights coming in the chat box. So, uh, you know, hugely appreciate your insight and we'll hopefully share some of those discussions again at the end um, in our sort of like uh, final summary, uh, summary section. Um, something to consider in this next video that we're going to play you. Um, the concept of blended learning, um, this this idea of shifting from online to face to face, is something that's been discussed widely within education at the present time. And uh, I urge you to look at these two questions as we uh, as we work through this next video, with a view to um, you know putting some comments into the chat box that you know hopefully we can uh, review at the end. But you know what role can blended learning play to help positively impact the future of PE delivery going forward in schools, um, and what do we need to you know, consider? if online learning becomes more prevalent within physical education. So two important questions for us to, to look at as this next video is played. Just sort of like turned into a bit of group chat now between uh, us as presenters from the FAP unit and, and you, Rick, from, uh, from ACPA in South Australia. Um, in terms of sort of like the impact that COVID-19 has had on, 
on parental's perceptions of, of PE, school sport, physical activity? What do you think some of the uh, the implications are for for that and, uh, you know, for, for those uh, schools in Australia and those parents in Australia? Yeah, well, like anything, it's variable, I think. You know, um, some parents will, will have a greater appreciation of what teachers are doing and of what teachers' work is. Um, because they've had to sit there with their kids and do that stuff. I think we're hearing some stories about parents going out with their kids and actually it became the activity break for the parent to do the phys ed lesson with the kid. So that those sort of things are nice. But that won't be in every case. You know, like we, we know families are all different and people react differently and they have different priorities. But I think for some, they'll actually start to know what the kids are learning, how they're learning, and how things have changed. Um, I'm hoping too that parents are now seeing that PE is more than just playing games um, and that it, it brings in things like, you know, teaching kids to think critically, um, to analyse, to critique, to do all of that sort of thing. So that those aspects of critical thinking will be, I, I think, brought to the fore more. Um, I think too, kids have missed in Australia being able to roam a bit and being able to do what they normally do because the lockdown has still affected club sport and all of that. That's only just beginning to return now. So schools return first and it's clubs sort of later on. Um, and it seems that the professional side of the game is more important to return uh, first, maybe because of that stuff, you know, rather than um, anything else. And I think the other thing is, you know, the importance of um, of that personal and social development. And I think the kids really miss that. Uh, so that's something they've come back to school with and, and watching kids just buzzing, just being able to talk to their neighbours. It's just wonderful. Yeah, and I think it's that you know, when we look at children and we think about the skills that physical education can provide, not only for their development within PE, but then ultimately across curriculum and then for wider life, you know, things like problem solving, physical resilience, mental resilience, um, you know, the development and self-confidence and self-esteem. I, I think these types of key skills and characteristics that we want to see embedded within our pupils and flourishing, hopefully we can get PE, school sport, physical activity back on the top of the agenda in terms of, you know, bringing these core skills to life as a view for uh, you know the holistic development yeah i look at and uh, and i think that's what we offer that's that's unique in in physical education or in australia in health and physical education we're we're dealing with the whole person right the social the emotional the physical you know the cognitive and and i would also add the spiritual you know in in terms of the values that we hold and how they're expressed and i think all of that comes out in fun things that we get kids to play called games. And that that's what becomes really important then uh, is that kids get to, to practice that stuff in an environment where it's sort of serious while they're doing it, but when it's over, it doesn't matter, you know, and you can make those mistakes. And I, and I, think, I think that giving kids permission to make those mistakes and have a go at things, have a crack at it is really important. Brilliant, thanks. Do you think, Rick, um, obviously, you know, you've outlined some of the, the changes that have taken place in PE provision over the last few weeks in Australia, and it's certainly been the same over here in the UK. Do you think there are any longer term benefits to, to what's happened in terms of maybe the, the online learning environment? Do you think there's any yeah. uh, longer term benefits which can have an, a positive impact on PE going forward over the next few years? Yeah, look, I, I think there will be. I, I think teachers have gone through this rapid growth in learning about how to use different platforms. Um, and some of our schools went crazy and, you know, used multiple platforms. So parents at home had to, and kids had to learn how to use Zoom, how to use, you know, Microsoft Teams and, and every other weird and wacky system that was around. So that they've actually been upskilled really quickly on that. And I think teachers are starting to see that there was some real use in using that those platforms for learning um, and that some kids responded really well to it and they weren't necessarily the kids that had responded well to the face-to-face -face stuff so 
you know, like there, there's learning there. So I, I think you're quite right, Brian. There'll be that that carry on and use of some of that at a higher level than we've seen before, but a more discerning use of it because I think we learn a lot, right? Um, the other the other sort of things though that might happen is kids will be online more, longer. They'll be there's the potential for them to be sedentary for increasing lengths of time. So we've got to think about what that means. Um, but they might alternatively become better at self-paced tasks. So they'll take a task and they'll actually work through that. That might mean too that we've got to actually support them and start to help them with goal setting, um, determining when the goals are going to be hit and all of that sort of thing, what's realistic. You know, don't leave it all till the end. You know, some of us adults aren't good at that, but, you know, we're going to try and teach kids how to do that. Um, I think, though, that what will come out of it, though, is with kids online more, we might have to spend more time with them, teaching them how to get on better with each other and how to be better people. So um, it seems that if you're online a lot, that's what sort of drops off. Uh, and that sensitivity to the needs of others sometimes uh, on that online environment. You know? So I, th I think that we're going to have to spend more time on building relationships and showing kids how to build relationships. But, geez, you know what, four, four months ago, we didn't predict any of this, you know, four or five months ago. So, you know, like, who knows where we're going to be in five years' time? Because in four months, we've seen this rapid change. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a good guess, but who knows? Yeah, and I think, you know, I think what you've said there is just outlined the power P he's got, hasn't it? You know, to that, you know, couple of hours a week that a teacher maybe gets with that class in terms of a PE environment and the power that can have to, to build those relationships, which, which, as you say, if online learning becomes... A, a new normal you know that, that phrase that's banded about a lot then yeah. that that time that we do get with, with the children in an environment where they can be physically active where they can be playing those games where they have got that social interaction is going to be absolutely vital isn't it yeah yep you know it's, it's it's unique what we do is unique and we need we need to remember that you know and it's unique because it involves movement and that learning in the physical through the physical and about the physical and we've got to get that balance right. Um, but it, it's that learning through, like when, when I do a lot of stuff around personal and social development with teachers, and typically the sort of stuff that I go to is Don Hellison's work around teaching personal and social responsibility through physical activity. Teachers come up to me and, that, and they say, this is what's really important, you know? It's good that we have better people you know, if they happen to pick up a few game schools and all of that, that's a bonus. I want good people out of this, you know, and, and it's sort of, you know, you don't have to go far from where you live. You know, you, you listen to a guy like Rafa or you read his book, you know, in, in terms of tennis, and his parents were quite clear. It was more important that Rafa was a good person before he was a great player. That was what was important. And it, it shows it shows, you know, and that that caring for each other and and those personal and social skills is is what's you know to me number one or or sits equally with those other three aspects, you know, the movement skills, the strategies, and then the personal and social development. I think I think for me, Rick, that is a perfect way to end uh, our conversation together because. Uh, it's it's music to our ears in terms of the FAP unit as to, as to the things that you've outlined there and just everything that we want to get out of physical education, everything we advocate, uh, you've summed up very nicely there. So I think it's a perfect opportunity for, for us all just to say a, a massive thank you for, for your time. And I'm sure I, I speak on behalf of all the, the hundreds of coaches and teachers who, who will be watching this webinar and watching it back uh, in, in the weeks to come, who, who will be very grateful for your insight and for uh, the nuggets of knowledge, which I'm sure they can take away and start to influence their their own practice in terms of PE provision as well. No, you're too kind. It's great. Keep up the great work, fellas. And, uh, you know, and to all the teachers that are watching, 
thank you for what you do on a daily basis, for what you do and what you keep going, that extra step to do, because that's what make, makes the difference. And that difference in some kids' lives is huge. So thank you from the profession. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Rick. Thanks. Thank you. Some wonderful insights uh, there from Rick, who, who kindly joined us and gave up his time from uh, from ACPA in South Australia. Um, I think there's some real um, things to consider about blended learning. We've got to think about the benefits. We've got to think about the challenges. We've got to think about um, accessibility. Um, so there's definitely some things to think about there. What I'm very keen to do now is is move into a bit of discussion as obviously now us as coordinators and, and look at the rich insights that have come through from the uh, uh, the attendees today so over to you ryan yeah thanks chris and uh, i'm sure you know i echo echo those sentiments i'm sure everyone on the call does about you know those nuggets that are taken away so i've just put this slide up there just to, to kind of start to consolidate um some of the conversations we've had with rick today and and like you say chris some of the, some of the stuff that's coming in the chat box has just been a pleasure to read and and you know just some of the ideas that people have got and sharing good practice and you know, insights into into what they've taken from the conversation. So, it'd be it'd be great. You know, as we as we start to as we start to wrap things up, if you if you could just drop in and and, and consider what has been your big takeaway message from today's conversations with Rick. And obviously, based on those three outcomes, we, we talked about engaging parents, uh, using PE as a tool to to rejuvenate and reconnect. Uh, with pupils and, and school values and the, the role blended learning, you, you know, can play in a, in a positive future for PE. So I've just put some some questions to consider in your reflection uh, at the bottom there about, you know, your big takeaway message. What information have you collected from today? What are you curious about? Um, what will you commit to in your PE delivery going forward? And, you know, what will you change possibly? What might you start to introduce based on some of the conversations that we've had today? So just as just I can see that flying in already and a lot of them are on, along a similar theme. Is there uh, anything, Will, that, that stands out for you from those conversations that, you know, is, is your big takeaway from today? Yeah, I think two things, really. Firstly, um, how many of us set P homework? Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be like a written homework, but how many of us set perhaps a challenge that the kids can go back and take to their parents and challenge the parents to, to be physically active? I'm not sure if that happens. Um, routinely. Um, but secondly, I think we're moving into a time now where we need to be um, even more aware of the child's background and in terms of their home life and their experiences. Um, certainly, you know, if we're going to go into this blended um, delivery, if we're going to start to use social interactions with the parents as well and bring the parents on board, you know, we've got to be really aware of what um, access they have to online platforms and, and everything, and also just about how, how those, those kids are feeling. Um, so. I think we need to be even more aware of um, how they're feeling and then also start to plan even more individually for, for the children moving forwards. Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think, I think they're great points and, you know, that they echo a lot of the, a lot of the things that are coming in. Uh, anything for you, Chris, that, that stands out for you from the conversations? Yeah, I think if we look back at our previous uh, webinar content series, I think one of the biggest things I'm, I'm really excited about personally to get back into the, the shop floor working with the children and then also thinking about maybe a, something that the uh, the listeners can do today. I, I think we really need to explore psychological and social. Um, you know, it's going to be 13, 14 weeks as we currently stand that some children might not be in school. You had the summer holidays on and we're getting close to 20 weeks where children have not had that social collaboration, that cooperation, that communication with, with, with individuals at their age and stage of uh, development. So... I think we've got to really push learning objectives to the fore that are in that psych and social corner. We know physical is going to happen because it's PE, but ultimately our attention will focus for me when we get back and, and hopefully where we, um, we we get into the new normal, psychological and social provision with, with key objectives aligned to the national curriculum will be vital for me, I think, across Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. Yeah, and you can probably see that that's been echoed in, in the chat box. You know, the amount of time, you know, it's... It, it's scrolling up really fast, but the, the words that keep standing out to me are that that social development and how important that is. And I think I think for me that that clear message is developing the person first before before the player or the sports person in PE. And 
you know, we can't make every pupil that we work with into an elite athlete, but what we can do is help them to develop into a good person. And, you know, I think it might be biased, but PE can do that better than any other subject. And and like you say, I think that brings us nicely full circle, really, round to the uh, the first webinar that we did, how many weeks ago, 10, ten weeks yeah. ago, where, you know, Tom and Sharon talked about uh, PE beyond the physical and that holistic development of a child. And, you know, I think I think we've gone right right back round round to that today, haven't we? And and how important that is and, and the power PE has to do that. And it, it's great seeing those sentiments echoed in the chat box as well by the, the hundreds of, uh, of teachers we've got joining us today. And, and I think it is a, is a nice way to, to wrap up this second series, going full circle to, to where we started 10 weeks ago. Just to, just to consolidate things a little bit further, like I said, there's uh, a couple of um, websites there that, that you might be interested in and, and the FP guidance I referred to earlier. I'm just going to release the handouts now. So for those watching it live uh, with us this afternoon, uh, the, the slides are available for you to, to download and also the certificate. And I'm also going to point you in the direction of the FA Learning YouTube channel. And there is a, a physical education playlist which has the, the seven previous webinars uh, from, the, from the first two series available for you to watch uh, at your leisure if you have missed any. And today's will be going uh, uploaded and, and online over the next few days. And again, you know, if you've got colleagues who haven't been able to, to join today or for previous webinars, please point them in, in, in that direction. Uh, and, you know, lots of content along uh, around lots of different elements of primary physical education. Although this is the last in the, the primary specific series uh, for, season, for, for season two today, uh, we have got uh, some, some more webinars continuing on Tuesday as part of our Girls Football Schools Partnerships. And this is the one coming up th this Tuesday, using games effectively in lessons. So if you are interested in that, the link is there. And the best way to, uh, to, to get that link is, is to follow us on Twitter. And that way you can keep up to date with all the latest news, information and events for, from the FAPE unit uh, and sign up for, for the events that we've got coming up over, over the next few weeks and beyond. And I think that you know brings it brings us nicely to you, you know wrapping up series one series two and you know it's it's been fantastic to to engage with, with with so many teachers during this time and you know i think we've had about five thousand people join us live over the course of the the eight uh, episodes which has been you know mind-blowing for us and, and absolutely fantastic and, and we are so grateful for your for your engagement with what we're doing and it'd be brilliant for us if if using the hashtag of FAPE unit and in, in our Twitter handle, you know, if you have got any thoughts and reflections, not just about today, but about the series overall, uh, it'd be brilliant to hear from you and any ideas you've got taken forward. And, and again, you can use that hashtag to, to start to share your good practice and get in touch with each other like you have been doing in the chat box. Um, so I think, you know, you know finally, uh, I just want to, to, to thank Rick uh, for, for joining us uh, late, late at night in Australian time to, to record uh, record those fantastic conversations. Uh, a big thank you to, to Chris and Will uh, for, for their for their input and, uh, and facilitating those conversations. Uh, thank you to Kelly in the background who's who's been making sure that everything's run smoothly. And you know, finally, biggest thank you to every every single one of you who has joined us not just today but over the over the course of the series or, or two series. Uh, because you know, without your engagement and, and without your commitment to join us, then uh, these these will be nothing. So thank you very much. And on that note, I'll say a big thank you and a goodbye from all of us, and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Look after yourselves and stay safe.